I like short back and side suits you, the old shaven head. Oh, thank you very much. Very few faces could get away with that. Well, I'm not sure mine did, but anyway, it was an interesting haircut. Yeah, yeah, and of course it applied it across the board because Charles Dance has mm -hmm. it. Brian mm -hmm. Glover, who started off with the advantage of not having any hair in the first place. Uh -huh. um, what was the point of all that? Well, I think it was David Fincher, the director, wanted to, I think, make us all look quite different from the characters in the other films. And I think he thought it was both, at once, a quite aggressive look, which it is, I have to say, people do avoid you on the street when they see a six-foot-tall, bald, bald woman, yes. Okay. But um, it also, I think, makes us look very vulnerable, uh, like little baby faces, in a way. So. And of course, it was to do with the lice, wasn't it? Theoretically, yes. And we, we did hear that there was a scene where you were covered in lice, but there's nothing in the film in which you're covered in lice, which is a source of disappointment. Ah, me. well, I'm sorry. There, it is on the cutting room floor. I was covered with lice, which was... Uh, really nice. I, I managed to... I had to have things in my ears and nose so they wouldn't get away and never come out of me again. But um, it was, you know... The things you do for your eyes. I know, I know. I'm so lucky. <laughs> Most of the cast appeared to be British. Mm-hmm. And there's obviously a reason for that. Well, we 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 were lucky. <laughs> uh, we had the most wonderful cast, um, uh, and we have always made the alien pictures here in England. Um, Why so is that? Well, I think I think the English technicians are are quite awesome to use a, an American term, um, and also the the way they they build these sets uh, is uh, very innovative. Um, and so they've always been made here for a lot of different artistic reasons. I thought it might have been something to do with the fact that your, your mother was English. Ah, well, that's the, that's the good side of it. I, I get to see my family, and I love working in England. I've made most of my pictures I've made over here. It's an apocalyptic, gruesome fantasy, this appalling creature. Mm. Do you think that there's an increasing fashion for this kind of movie? I... I guess there's an increasing appetite for a kind of visceral experience at the cinema. I think that television has given us a real appetite for violence on, on screen, and that we, we seem to, as a, as a crowd, enjoy sort of that kind of feeling. But what's interesting, I think, about some of these films that are coming out of this summer is that it's the end of the century, and that there's a great balance of sort of cynicism and optimism in these pictures. Our film is quite grim, but in a way, it's quite uplifting, too, and there's a lot of humor in it, et cetera, in spite of the, the grimness. So it's a, I think it's very appropriate, actually, for the 90s, in a way. You're an actress, uh, and a fine actress, who has, it seems to me, anyway, picked her parts with some care. Did you resist doing Alien 3? Well, yes, I think we all resisted it, because the first two had been, uh, had been well done, and we didn't want to, like, mess it up the third time. So I think everyone approached it, the producers and, and 20th Century Fox, we all approached it with trepidation. And it wasn't really till we had a good situation in the story. That, and, um, and I particularly felt that what I had a chance to do as an actor in this film was, was very challenging because she's, she, my character is, is for a long time in this picture, the alien, because she's in this colony of men uh, who have sort of avoided and, and come away from women to, to whom women are forbidden. And so she's considered really a, a danger, a threat, and almost... She's an assertive, aggressive character. She doesn't mind using her fists. Well, in the case in which I use my fists, I think it's highly justified <laughs> after an attempted rape. But actually, I don't consider her an aggressive character at all. I consider her quite low-key. But assertive. Um, well, she's in a very aggressive world and yeah. asserts herself because no one will listen to her if she just says something normally. She has to sort of get their attention. You know? is, the, is that you? I mean, how much of that is you? Are you an assertive person yourself? Um, I guess when I have to be, I am. Well, the trouble is in films, of course, all the leading men, most of them are midgets, aren't they? Well, um, most of the leading men I've worked with are very tall. And in fact, the only man who complained about my height even <laughs> nicely was uh, six feet four. And Mel Gibson, who's shorter than I am, was sweet about my height and never, you know, he's 5'9", and I was, I guess I'm 5'11", and he, he couldn't have been nicer about it, you know. It didn't bother him at all, because I think he's very secure. Yes. You 
Some of the films you've done, Aliens, Ghostbusters, Working Girl, it's some of the most successful movies of the last few years from Hollywood. Does it make you a very powerful person in Hollywood? No. Does it, <laughs> does it make you know the ones we read about who can demand $5 million a picture and all this kind of thing? I don't think, um, I don't think actors are very powerful in Hollywood in, behind the scenes. There are a few actors who are, uh, like Kevin Costner. I can't think of a single woman who is. And I guess part of it is that I think we have better things to do than run after power in Hollywood. We have our families to raise and our children to take care of. And I, I think that's a much better way of spending your time than getting a, a big deal. I did do well on this picture because I felt that, um, that men in action pictures are being offered so much more money than women that it was just galling. And so I, I attempted to make a kind of test case with this. But I would never expect to be offered that kind of salary for a normal lead, female lead in picture. You just wouldn't get it. You'd be crazy to try. You, you are a busy actress. You work a lot. You've made a lot of movies and lots of them very successful and a couple of slow ones mm. as well. So you do work and you like working. Well, I, I've done very little work since my daughter was born. I've only done really one job and then a quickie on uh, 1492, which is coming out in the fall, because I, I know that she's going to get, she's going to be going to school in about five minutes, you know, and, and that this time is so important with her, and I, I want to, her to remember that I was there, I was her mother, you know, that's the most important thing I can do in my whole life, I think. And is it the last of Lieutenant Ripley? Well, I think, I think it is. How close do you get to that appalling monster? I mean, it can't be easy to work mm. with something that looks like that. Well, actually, I find the alien quite beautiful. The Giger designs are very um, extraordinary. Um, uh, for some reason, the alien has... I never really spend time with the guy playing the alien. I don't want to get used to, like, seeing him drink tea and stuff. You yeah. know? So when, when I have had scenes with the alien, which is very, very few, uh, it's always been quite a powerful experience because it is very frightening you know especially because the director kept putting bugs all over this one that would leap on your face and up your nose <laughs> it was even more terrified well i hope i hope you do slightly more genteel movies thank you for joining <laughs>